Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you, whether you're here in person or watching our live stream, to the swearing in of Lord Hodge as Deputy President of the Court. A special welcome is given to Lady Hodge and to the many other members of the Hodge family and their friends uh, who are here. It's also a particular pleasure uh, to welcome Lord Keane of Ely, uh, Her Majesty's Advocate General for Scotland, uh, here also representing the Lord Chancellor, the Master of the Rolls, the President of the Queen's Bench Division, other senior judges from England, Wales and Scotland, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Commons, the Convener of the Cross Benches in the House of Lords, the Lord Advocate and Solicitor General for Scotland, the Dean of Faculty and the President of the Law Society of Scotland, the Chair of the Bar Council, former Justices, and the many others who have taken the trouble to attend this ceremony. Many of you will be familiar with the ceremony you're about to witness, either because you have recently attended to support a person being sworn in, or because you've actually been that person. But for those not familiar with it, it's relatively simple, but no less important for that. After some introductory words about him, Lord Hodge will be invited to come forward to take the oaths required by law. Uh, first, the oath of allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen, and secondly, the judicial oath. Uh, that one is etched on the glass screen in the entrance hall as you came into the building. It reminds the members of the court every day of the oath that they have taken. Lord Hodge will then sign the oaths book, which is our permanent record of the oaths that have been taken. I shall then present Lord Hodge with the letters patent, recording his appointment by Her Majesty the Queen, and will then invite him to take his seat on the bench as Deputy President. It's been the custom uh, for the president of the court uh, to speak at this stage about the antecedents and qualities of the person being sworn in, unless that person is the president, him or herself, when modesty prevails. But there's no requirement for this, and just as the president does not give the judgment in every case, um, I've asked Lord Hodges' former neighbor, on the Justice's Corridor, Lord Wilson, to speak about Lord Hodge today. After Lord Wilson has spoken, I shall say a few, I'm sure, concurring words <laughs> before we proceed with the swearing in. Lord Wilson. It's a privilege for me to have been invited to expand on our welcome to Lord Hodge as our Deputy President. He was brought up in rural Perthshire, brilliant in school, brilliant at Corpus Cambridge, a first, of course, a brilliant student of law at Edinburgh University, a distinction, inevitably. At first, he went into the civil service, but soon he joined the faculty of advocates, and that was when he married Penny, who has been such a wonderful partner for him over all these years. He learnt his advocacy skills from his pupil master, the great Lord Kingarth. Lord Hodge ascended seamlessly at the bar in Edinburgh, brilliant again. He gravitated towards the most complex work, tax, commercial. After only 13 years, they put him in silk, but for years he practised only half-time. The other half he spent as a Scottish law commissioner devising improvements in the law of companies and partnerships. And then, in 2005, Lord Hodge became a judge as a senator of the college in Edinburgh. At first, crime, but then in the outer house as the tax judge and a commercial judge. In 2013, he joined us here the first judge to have joined the Appellate Committee and now the Supreme Court 
straight from a first instance court since Lord Jauncey 32 years ago. But in silk, Lord Hodge had sat in the Court of Appeal in Jersey and Guernsey, a high-powered court, and he had loved doing that. Lord Hodge quickly became a pivotal member of our team. He is great with people, thoughtful, sensitive. He is indefatigable with the increasing demands of outreach, and he's brilliant in court. Occasionally following a Scottish appeal, I venture a mild complaint to him about the jargon surrounding Scottish legal procedure. <laughs> How, I ask, is the man in the bar in Glasgow supposed to understand what the order of the inner house meant? Lord Hodge then tends to snap back that there's just as much jargon in the law of England and Wales, but that I'm unaware of it because I'm used to it. Which is absurd, of course. <laughs> He's really rather defensive about Scots law and can be quite combative. Lord Hodge seems to get roped in to hear all our really complex technical appeals. Case about a difference between earnings and emoluments for national insurance purposes? Bring in Lord Hodge! Impenetrable EU regulations on public procurement processes? Find Lord Hodge! The obviousness of an inventive step behind a dosage patent? Get Lord Hodge! For he is so quick to understand complex issues and so shrewd in devising their optimum resolution. So, Lord Hodge joins Lord Reed, Reed in charge of our court. The Scots have taken over, writes David Anderson. The law school at Edinburgh University is justified in its expression of pride in its two great sons. Today, the whole of Scotland will be celebrating. Well, except possibly in Ibrox. But... <laughs> But why has it fallen to me to say these words of welcome? The answer is that I speak in particular for England and Wales, and as Lord Kerr has confirmed to me, also for Northern Ireland. And it is therefore on behalf of every part of the UK that here I signify our profound delight at Lord Hodge's appointment. Now, no doubt we've all been reading Lord Hope's diary. Albeit covertly, because in some quarters they have attracted a degree of disapproval. <laughs> Lord Hope describes Lord Hodge as young, vigorous, and attractive. <laughs> <laughs> but don't get too excited, Patrick, that was 14 years ago. <laughs> a much more recent entry describes you as open, intellectually versatile, and interesting. And so say all of us. What lies ahead for you and Lord Reed? Increased scrutiny of the court? Fine. Criticism of our decisions? Of course. Absolutely essential. Unpleasant abuse of us in the media? Sign of the times. But some sort of erosion of our independence here? Then it would be over to the two of you to defend the rule of law. Look, Patrick, as Deputy President, you'll be brilliant. You always are. Lord <laughs> 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 Kerr, helpful as ever is saying to me, follow that. <laughs> <laughs> All I'll add is that Lord Hodges swearing in as Deputy President also gives me particular pleasure because we've known each other for almost 40 years and were, of course, contemporaries and friends at the bar and on the bench. Um, the fact that he was appointed to this court directly from the outer house of the Court of Session, uh, as Nicholas mentioned, um, tells its own story about the regard in which uh, Patrick is held. 
since then, he has proved himself to be a great asset to the court, um, especially, but by no means only, in the tax, chancery, and intellectual property cases, uh, including the Rangers case to which Nicholas alluded, uh, which form uh, such a substantial part of our caseload. I'm very much looking forward to working with him now in his new capacity as Deputy President of the Court. Lord Hodge, I invite you now to take the oaths. <clears throat> I, Patrick Stuart Hodge, do swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors, according to law. I, Patrick Stuart Hodge, do swear by Almighty God that I will well and truly serve our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, in the office of Deputy President of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, and I will do right to all manner of people after the laws and usages of this realm, without fear or favour, affection or ill will. I invite you now to sign the oaths book. I have great pleasure in presenting you with your letters patent. And I have great pleasure now in inviting you to resume your seat on the bench as the Deputy President of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. That concludes our ceremony. Thank you all for coming today, or for watching online. It's good to have had so many to witness this uh, ceremony. When the court adjourns in a moment, um, the judges are going to go to court two in order to have a group photograph taken. You are very welcome to go into the lobby where there are refreshments available, and we will join you just as soon as we can. The court will now adjourn. <laughs>